Theoretical and practical questions of the non-invasive measurement of art testiveness. Part 4. Limitations of the formerly used methods measuring art stiffness. Formerly, the most frequently used non-invasive methods for assessing art stiffness were the applanation tonometry and the piezoelectric method. Using applanation tonometry for the pulse wave analysis, we do have to diminish the diameter of the artery, pushing the probe against of the artery to be able to arrange the pressure vectors towards to the sensor and to obtain pressure curves. Doing so, Bernoulli effect will occur because if we reduce the diameter of a tube, the speed of the flow will increase and proportionally the pressure will drop. The action of this phenomenon is that the recognizability of the late systolic wave will be difficult and becomes difficult. In the real life situation, this difficulty could be so much that you cannot and we cannot recognize the late systolic wave in the declining phase of the first pressure curve in the systole. Here we can see the handheld probe which is pushed against of the artery. In the applanation tonometric technology, the input signal typically the radial artery, and then the radial artery pressure wave is mathematically transferred to aortic pressure curve. However, if we do not have any input signal about the second systolic wave, it's questionable how it could be generated mathematically in the aortic pressure curve. Measuring aortic pulse velocity, formerly the piezoelectric and the applanation tonometric methods were most popular. However, measuring carotid femoral pulse velocity, inaccuracies and limitation can be found using so-called piezoelectric method, and this device is the complier. This device uses two sensors, which is advantage seemingly because we can record the same heart cycle simultaneously. However, the propagation of the generated pressure signal is opposite towards to the carotid artery and towards to the femoral artery. Thus, we don't know what is the distance which is proportional to that time difference we measured between the carotid and femoral side. The distance is the O point, but we don't know where it is because it is depending on the actual aortic pulse velocity, which is depending on the actual aortic wall characteristics, because if the stiffer the aortic wall, definitely the pulse velocity will be higher, and then this O point will be more distally. On the contrary, in less, elast less uh, rigid or less stiff artery, this kind of distance will be closer to the heart. For this reason, when we measured in the past the direct distance between the carotid and femoral point, and we use this time delay between the carotid and femoral sites, definitely we overestimated the actual aortic pulse wave velocity. This was one reason why the European Society of Hypertension guidelines reduced the threshold level of the aortic pulse velocity from 12 meters per second to 
10 meter per second. The Aplanation Tonometric Method, the Sigma Core Method, uses ECG gating to determine the aortic pass velocity, better to say the carotid femoral pass velocity. Because of using the ECG gating, the problem with the opposite direction is eliminated because this method measures the R wave and femoral time and R wave and carotid time and the RC is distracted from the RF. Thus, the true so-called aortic pass wave velocity time can be determined. However, it carries also limitation because the measurement is sequential. First we measure the carotid or femoral side and then we do measure the other one and in between a couple of minutes can be elapsed. It causes difficulty because if we using the ACG gating, the R wave interval, and we use the occurrence of the pressure signal, in between there is a time which is called isovolumetric contraction time, when the left ventricle from almost the zero reaches the pressure of the diastolic pressure in the artery to be able to open the aortic valve. This time, so-called isovolumetric contraction time, varies beat to beat basis. Then, if we measure the carotid femoral pass velocity sequentially, first on the carotid and then onto the femoral artery, the isovolumetric contraction time will differ. This causes, unfortunately, inaccuracy in the measured aortic pass velocity. Measuring arterial stiffness with piezoelectric method carries several limitations. The operator needs skill. The carotid tonometry is rather difficult. The patient must be undressed. There is possibility of technical errors in obese subjects uncertainty and approximation in the measurement of the distance between the two arterial sites. There is a theoretical risk of carotid rupture, plug rupture by probe. Patients with atrial fibrillation cannot be evaluated. In that time, this device was unable to measure the pulse wave analysis, namely the augmentation index and the central blood pressure. And this method overestimated, especially in high ranges, the aortic pass velocity values because of the opposite direction of the wave propagation. And we added some more limitations, namely this method is not able to measure simultaneously the aortic pass velocity, the aortic augmentation index, the aortic systolic blood pressure and the brachial blood pressure. Furthermore, the method is really time consuming and this reason it can hardly be used for the population studies which require fast and easy use method. Also we have limitations regarding the arterial stiffness measurement with aplanation tonometric method which is an ECG gated method mostly used for SWIGMOCOR. Also it requires skill dependency and operator skill by the user. Also, the carotid tonometry is difficult. The patient must be undressed. Technical errors in obese subjects. So, more or less the same limitations are existing like in the further and the former one. However, uh, this is uh, a point should be mentioned uh, that the debate regarding the validity of the generic transfer function used to determine from the radial pressure curve the aortic one. So the calibration for the blood pressure requires uh, a very precise measurement and this is not uh, currently available. The pathway velocity transit time delay is calculated using reference ECG signal obtained at different times. For the, uh, in the previous slide I showed that the isometric contraction time varies bit by bit, thus the sequential recording carries inaccuracy in this respect. 
It also cannot measure the aortic pulse velocity, augmentation index, central systolic blood pressure and blood pressure simultaneously. And also this method is rather time consuming and this way hardly can be used for population studies. As a conclusion, we can say that the demonstrated methods which we used formerly, despite of their several limitations, were really excellent and a lot of studies which based the importance of the arterial stiffness measurement use this kind of technologies. However, because of the sophisticated manner of that kind of technologies which I lighted, highlighted, these methods were not able to penetrate into the daily clinical practice and the arterial stiffness measurement unfortunately remained at the research side only and new methods are needed to be able to open the door towards the daily clinical routine. Thank you for your attention.